Hello everyone, uh, it is a great honor to be here to present some research that's greatly inspired and indebted by work presented by this community in uh, previous years. Um, I guess like the uh, starting point for our work here is that uh, we are experiencing a boom on AI research and that a big part of this boom is involving dissemination of research through open uh, channels, through preprints, through open source software, things like that. And we believe that there's a great opportunity to use these novel data sources in order to generate indicators about AI research, which are relevant for policy. That's one of our big audiences. But we also think that there's a great opportunity to use uh, this data in order to answer interesting uh, research questions. And that's what we're going to be doing in this, in this paper. We're going to be looking at three questions. The first one is, uh, does uh, AI behave like a method, uh, invention in the methods of invention or maybe development, given that we're going to be focusing on computer science? Has this geography been disrupted by the arrival of new methods, such as deep learning? Do we see um, an increase in volatility of the geography of the field, followed by consolidation, which is maybe what we would expect to see if uh, deep learning was a disruptive new method? And then what are the local factors that are conducive to the development of AI research and development clusters? And here we're really interested in understanding the extent to which the presence of related research capabilities and related industrial capabilities in a region explains it, its ability to become more competitive in AI research. And maybe a way to think about this is how uh, when DeepMind Health starts to explore uh, how to apply deep learning uh, methods in health, they go and collaborate with a hospital in London, which is where they were based, instead of collaborating with a hospital in Newcastle or a hospital in Toronto. So we want to get a handle on those uh, dynamics. Uh, and in order to be able to do this, we're going to be looking at archive data. So, um, and I should say, we're going to be very focused on deep learning, which is, I guess, as we have been hearing through the conference, the technique that's really revolutionized AI research in recent years. Um, archive is uh, a preprint data uh, website widely used by the AI research community, currently contains 1.6 million papers. We're going to be focusing on the papers uh, related to computer science and statistics machine learning. And then in order to be able to look at an industrial activity, we're going to be using Crunchbase, which is a, a, a company directory with around 720,000 companies uh, within the uh, technology sector or broadly defined. Uh, I guess I'm going to just take you through a very quick tour of our data pipeline. We're going to be starting with the computer science papers in archive. Basically, what we're going to be doing is using topic modeling to identify those papers within archive which are related to deep learning. We're going to be looking at the co-occurrence between deep learning and other computer science fields in order to identify which of those fields are related to uh, deep learning research. And then basically, we're going to have to take the titles of archive we're going to match that with the Microsoft Academic Graph in order to get the institutions of the researchers working on those papers. And then we're going to take those institutions, match them with the Global Research Identifier grid in order to get the locations of those institutions, which is going, what's going to allow us to do this geographical analysis. Uh, and then when working with Crunchbase, basically what we're going to be doing is compare the descriptions of companies in Crunchbase uh, using machine learning uh, with uh, the abstracts of papers in order to identify which of the sectors in Crunchbase are more related to deep learning research. We put all of this together to analyze and all of the codes in GitHub if you want to get the data. Uh, and actually we're building a system called ArcLive which is going to keep updating this data in real time and hopefully this is going to become a resource for researchers out there who want to use these methods. So, okay, what do, do we find? So, uh, first question was, uh, do we find evidence of uh, deep learning uh, behaving as a GPT inside of computer science research. And obviously this is work building on the work presented here uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and we find evidence that AI is a GPT in computer science. And I guess the way we uh, think about it is almost like an invention in the methods of development. We have, uh, I guess, three tests for this. The first one is uh, we ask, okay, is it experiencing rapid growth in activity, both in absolute and relative terms? We find that 77% of the deep learning papers in archive were published in the last five years, and this is a much faster rate than what we see in other uh, uh, domains of computer science. Is it applied in many different sectors, and is it impactful in those sectors where it's applied? Basically, what we find that, yes, it is true that uh, uh, categories such as uh, neural networks, AI, learning, those that specialize on the development of algorithms, have 
uh, uh, lots of activity uh, around deep learning, but we also find other application fields, uh, including computer vision, computer language, multimedia, information retrieval. They also display a lot of activity around deep learning, and uh, these are all fields that have a lot of unstructured data uh, that we, we, I guess we assume it's complementing these uh, powerful deep learning algorithms. And then we also find, and this is what this is showing, simply that uh, for most, most disciplines in archive, uh, 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 deep learning papers are overrepresented amongst the highly cited, which is consistent with the idea that deep learning is, if not quite impactful, because I guess we are not measuring um, impact here, at least it's being influential in, in the fields where it's published. And I guess uh, this is consistent with this tweet I saw only this Sunday about how in, if in the last 20 years software ate the world, in the next 20 years AI will be eating software. Um, so. Uh, moving into the geographical uh, part of the story. So uh, here, I guess what we're interested in understanding is uh, changes in the relative specialization of countries and regions. You know, do we see some places coming up, some places going down. Uh, there are lots of maps in the paper. I haven't put them here because of space and time. But uh, I guess what we're saying, seeing when we look at countries is this uh, arrival of China in deep learning research. We see this arrival of Singapore, this arrival of Canada. U.S. catching up after uh, being behind a bit at the beginning, and EU countries uh, falling behind, which is consistent with the rhetoric uh, in, in the EU about the AI race. Um, when we look at uh, uh, changes in concentration, and this is really interesting, remember 2012 is something that was very prominently fo uh, uh, featured in Jack's presentation yesterday as the arrival of deep learning. We see that up to the point when deep learning arrives, there was a decline in the level of, uh, of uh, uh, deep learning research activity accounted by the top locations. And then from 2012, we start to see very rapid consolidation and actually a, a deep learning becoming more concentrated. And here, uh, we, we link this, I guess, to the idea that there was a new technology emerging, being developed, a lot of exploration, a lot of experimentation, many different clusters exploring the, this method. And then over time, I guess a dominant design arrives uh, and a few like R&D clusters uh, in AI start to become dominant. Uh, to conclude, uh, in terms of, uh, okay, two minutes. Uh, I hear. So just to conclude, uh, I said that we also wanted to look at complementarities between, uh, 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 I guess, research and industrial capabilities and a region's ability to develop a deep learning cluster. We have this very simple model, which is considering uh, whether uh, locations, uh, regions, uh, re uh, specialization in deep learning after 2012 is a function of a specialization before 2012. Uh, 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 level of activity in research activities related to deep learning, level of activity in crunch based activities, industrial activities related to deep learning. And then I think these are the interesting ones. We are considering the, the interactions. So it, are those places that have a combination of research and industrial activity related to deep learning? And also those that have a combination of research overall and industrial activity overall uh, able to uh, develop a stronger uh, research specialization in this area. And we also include, uh, I, I guess, like total level of activity in archive, and also uh, we include a dummy for China. Uh, and then what we do is we compare the results with equivalent models for other archive categories. So we take this model and we fit it for uh, papers with deep learning, but other pa also papers in other uh, computer science categories in archive. And basically what we find, and, and this is a deep learning coefficient, the results suggest that collocation with related disciplines and sectors and with a critical mass of research and industrial activity, as well as being in China, is associated with an increase in deep learning research and development specialization in a region, which is consistent with the idea of how this collocation favors deployment, but it also might be picking up how uh, um, there's like a set of policy and regulatory factors not captured in our model and being absorbed by this China variable that, that is making a, a difference for uh, regions in that country. To conclude, uh, we acknowledge lots of limitations in everything we have done. These are experimental data sets that need to be triangulated. We are defining deep learning uh, at a very sort of monolithic way. We would like to actually be able to distinguish between papers which are experimental, papers which are theoretical, actually analyzing the abstracts. The model is very informal. We would like to formalize this. Um, the analysis is correlational. We need to develop an identification strategy. And actually, Daniel already gave us an idea on how to do this, perhaps using TensorFlow as, as a shock, uh, technology shock. Um, we need to get a handle on the mechanisms here uh, uh, underpinning the patterns we are looking at. 
uh, uh, for example, we could use additional information such as co-authorships and citations or access to finding or even labor flows to be able to see what is it about co-location of research and industry that favors uh, AI uh, research. And finally, we would like to look at economic impacts. So we would like to, uh, uh, um, I guess, not just look at changes in comparative advantage in AI research, but also start to think about economic impacts and impacts on productivity. Just to conclude in 10 seconds, just with some policy implications. Uh, so our, our results suggest that the arrival of deep learning has disrupted the geography of AI research, creating opportunities for new entrants. But we are seeing a lot of consolidation in recent times, uh, suggesting that the window of opportunity to entering into uh, this uh, sector might be closing down. And also we identify, or we find that it's very important to consider the presence of related research capabilities and industrial capabilities in allocation before investing on trying to develop a, a, an a AI research cluster there. And we believe that the kind of data we have used in this analysis could inform that kind of policy decision. Thank you. <laughs>